Today I show you the easiest way to set up your iPad using your iPhone, using an existing Apple device that will speed up the process, the setup process. This is the iPad Pro M5, the 13 inch, and I'm really happy to have it. And this is the screen you want to see. You see hello when it says hello without iPad lock to owner, that's good. You can set up the iPad as a new device for yourself. And here you have to accept this information. This is information about the iPad, what it's doing, and maybe you want to read it. Maybe hugely people don't read those things. Also, it's important to set the appearance how you want it. I prefer to set it to the default, the regular. And then now I have the option to do a quick setup with the iPhone. You can also do this manually. I have another video where you don't need an iPhone to set it up, but when you bring the iPhone closer to the iPad, you get this pop-up on the iPhone and it's making things easier for you. You have to scan this kind of cloud with the iPhone, this kind of a QR code, something to verify that it's you with the phone and with the iPad, so there is no someone else trying to take over your uh, device. And once the devices are linked, the iPad and the iPhone, they will work together to synchronize information from the iPhone to the iPad and especially your account information. This is by far really the easiest way to set up your iPad. When you get a new iPad, you can set it up like this and you can even restore from a backup of a previous iPad or you can even use a backup of the iPhone to bring apps there. But it's better to, I believe it's better to set it up separately and now i have the option to finish so my iphone says finish the setup on the ipad and on the ipad you might have to wait especially if you're restoring a large backup from icloud then that might take some time you have to connect to wi-fi you need to connect to wi-fi and updates i prefer not to do it but it's up to you some things you have to do immediately some things right away or later but for this you have to accept the privacy notification and for face id i prefer to set it up from the beginning better to do it from before and be done with it especially that you can do this rotate with your head and now you can unlock the ipad with your face with the face id you have to do it twice for verification and also you have to turn the head around like this how i do it like that the ipad face id sensor will detect multiple position positions of your face so it can unlock in different angles now it's, it's up to you if you want to clean your ipad or no i had some fingerprints on it but yeah the terms and conditions you have to read them if you want to i don't really read this it's too much to read and that's actually not much but you have to accept the terms and conditions if you want to continue so that's yeah here the iphone still says finish on ipad so it's not really done yet and this is the important part here it's you see the screen like this when you already have an icloud backup for this device and you see the date of the backup when it was backed up up and data apps and data you can also choose to enable or disable some of the options I prefer to keep it like this, but I want to show you that you can change this. You can do a setup as a new device, so you can use customize, and then you can choose the iCloud backup or even don't transfer anything. That would be the fastest way to set up the iPad with don't transfer anything, but that's going to be a basic default iPad without any customization. You will not have any of your settings. If this is what you want, you could do it like this. You could even transfer from Android or from Mac or PC or from another iPad. This is really convenient here. It's nice to have many options there. I continue with the restore of the iCloud backup. I will leave the payment cards for later for wallet for the Apple Pay. I don't really need to start looking for the CVC codes now and I don't really think I will need Apple Pay on the iPad, but I will set it up later eventually. Now this is complete, it says enjoy your new iPad, I like that, and you also get a notification on the iPhone that a new device, a new iPad has access to FaceTime and iMessage, so this is important to know which devices have access. And you can choose to share or not share analytics, and this Apple intelligence, I like to use it, and also I like to use the summarize notification, these first two I set it up like this. And I like the priority notifications, but this is really, these are things that are simply preferences. So you might enable them or not, depending on how you prefer. 
Now this is going to take some time and it depends on how much data you have to transfer. I don't have much data to restore from iCloud to this iPad so this didn't take much time but for you it might take longer, you have to be patient. The whole process is really smooth, the, basically the steps are telling you what they're doing and you will see the progress bar. If something doesn't change, just give it time. It's a good idea to keep the iPad charged while you're doing this to make sure the battery is not running low and you see the the face ID is working. You also see that light blinking, that's the infrared light. You only see it on the camera here. In real life, you don't see this infrared light. And you see the apps are already starting to download. These are exactly the apps I had before doing the reset. I did a reset to factory for the iPad. And I made a few videos about doing iCloud lock. My iPad was freezing and I had to do a full reset. I actually I couldn't use the iPad at all. So hopefully it was just something with the apps I installed. I was trying to install some remote desktop apps and that something didn't work well. Fortunately, the iPad was okay after the reset. I did the remote reset using the iCloud to find my app. That went pretty well. So now the iPad is restoring. I can start using the apps pretty soon. Some of the apps are already available like the Notes app. I can already use the notes app and even photos. These are a few pictures that were on iCloud. I wanted to show them to you that you get them back, but this is only if you have them on iCloud. The default, the free plan is only five gigabyte from the iCloud. So if you have only that one, you might not have the photos. So be careful when you reset an iPad before you delete anything, make sure that you have them somewhere else. This is the information. It's iPad Pro 13 inch. M5. This iPad Pro has the M5 silicon from Apple and also it has 12 gigabytes of RAM of memory. Not like the M4 which had 8 gigabytes of memory. It's a pretty good improvement. I didn't have the M4 so I can't really say much the difference but everything is smooth. Everything is really responsive on the iPad. I can't really complain about anything. It's really good. The screen is really amazing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to use it for as many things as possible and the main purpose of this iPad is to edit the videos. This video was edited on the iPad, the first part, so there is I do it like a two part. I edit them on the iPad and then I finish the export on the computer. So yeah, the first part with the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. In DaVinci Resolve for iPad, I use the free version and then I bring the clips, I bring the edits into the full timeline for the DaVinci Resolve Studio, the paid version. So somehow I was able to use it like that. Maybe I will get the license for the iPad if I need to do a full edit from start to finish on the iPad, but so far it's working like that. You can see the cloud, iCloud information, how much space I have. It's not really not much space, only five gigabytes. So it's already used 1.6. Usually I don't back up photos to iCloud because they will finish the disk space very fast. But I do back up the app settings and the settings in general. So you can see my iPhone and the iPad together. This is basically what they're using. And the iPhone is 900 mega and the iPad now is 110 mega. And yeah, it could be more, but I guess it could be less. It's not too bad. Four settings only, I think it's okay. So the iPad is ready, it's gonna finish downloading some of the apps and that's it. I hope this helps you, thanks for watching.